Welcome back to Pro Shop. It's Pete here, and in this video, I'm back into the RBEH. In the last video, I removed the entire floor to make way for the new chassis rails that are going in, and in this video, I'll show you how I built them and the new bit of equipment I got to help me do it. Before I could put the new rails in, I first had to strengthen the points of the body where they'll be mounted to. There wasn't much left of the pillars where they met the sills, so I cleaned it up as best as I could and plated it with 3mm steel for strength. Now it was time to make the inner seals. I used 2mm zinc anneal, which I find is better than cold rod steel for any flat sheet metal work that doesn't involve a lot of shaping. Once trimmed and fitted, I then pre-drilled holes along the edge so I can plug weld it in. That will be done after I have the chassis in so it will hold it together and won't distort with the heat. I then painted the inner seals with miracle paint and the edges with a weld through primer and screwed the panels in place. At the rear of the car, there wasn't too much left to mount the chassis to, so I fabricated a new inner beaver from more 2mm steel. Once the rails are fitted, it will be harder to remove the old tubs, so I decided to cut them out now. I cut out the entire internal structure right out to the side panel, as I will be remaking all of it. I now needed to bolt the K-frame onto the body for the chassis to line up to. At the rear, the chassis will be welded into where the original rails were and then will continue right through to the front and bolt up to the K-frame. Both the HR and the last EH that I built had the same chassis rails. They were built by Dave from Arc Up Garage. He worked next to me at my old shop. We, along with the engineer, designed these rails to closely relate to the original rails of the utes. They are 65mm square tube with a wall thickness of 3mm. Dave designed the curved section with holes to allow mounting bungs for the forelink to locate into. This then suits a parallel forelink that has a decent amount of travel while still keeping its pinion angle relatively square throughout its travel. The curved sections are laser cut to slide inside the square tube with a little step and a chamfer so it sits flush with the outside. They were cut over length which I could have trimmed down as I only need around 200mm of overlap however I left them long to keep it square and added strength. I drilled plenty of holes for the plug welds and screwed it all together. The last thing I had to do was fold up a top and bottom, notch it and tack it in place. I 
built these rails by laying them flat on the concrete. However, to weld them together, I'm going to need something a little more secure. Lucky for me, in my spare time, I built this fixture table. I've been wanting a chassis table like this for a long time now, but I've never had the space. I designed this table to be big enough to fit a whole car on it. It measures 3 meters long by 1200 meters wide with 200 mil sides and is at a 12 mil thick plate. There is over 2000 holes in this bad boy. Holes that I can use to bolt the chassis down as I weld it to keep it straight. After the rails were fully welded in, I positioned the car over the table, then slid the rails in and fixed them in place. Next, I cut the outriggers and cross bracing and tacked them together. The final thing to do was fabricate the chassis mounts where it bolts to the K-frame. Now the body and chassis are tacked together, I can happily remove it from the rotisserie and the supporting frame. Well that's it for this video, stay tuned for the next one where I'll be fitting the diff building the forelink plus the part I've been waiting for, installing the motor and gearbox. So keep an eye out for that one and as always, thanks for watching.